hate to dig into the personal collection, but I think I could part with this. You. Hello? Is this Nevin? Hey, Nevin, this is Scott from Reindeer Studios. How are you, sir? Yeah. Hey, I hear you're a man with exquisite tastes. I have a delightfully tacky 95 Fleer Manny Ramirez with your name written all over it. No, not literally. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking this could be yours for the low, low price of $600. All right. I know. You can't blame a guy for trying, though, right? Okay, how about $40? Still no. Okay. How about $40 and a Manny Ramirez marker doodle? Yeah? Awesome. All right, thanks, Nevin. Bye. Hey, superstars, welcome back to the quest for my holy grail card. In case you have no idea what's going on, this is my series where I'm trying to sell off worthless cards for exorbitant amounts of money so that I can eventually buy my grail card, a T206 Cy Young portrait. But to make it work, I'm including some original art. So Nevin, who's a big Cleveland fan, much like myself, reached out and requested a Manny Ramirez doodle. And how could I say no to that? Manny was fantastic. Manny was a beast. Manny was stupendous. Manny was incredible. Manny was hilarious. Manny was Manny. I may have enough fodder to keep you entertained for almost three minutes without having to look up anything on Wikipedia. Now, I remember Manny's rookie year. Despite the fact that sports card companies labeled him as a rookie for three straight years, he only had one rookie year. Uh, I was super excited to get to see him play. My dad, on the other hand, was not impressed at all. I had a feeling he was going to be a phenomenal hitter. My dad saw a lackadaisical space cadet in a baseball uniform. We were both pretty much spot on. When Manny came up, he idolized Sandy Alomar Jr. He looked up to him like a big brother and he would constantly steal his bats. On top of that, he was known to take just about anything out of his teammates' lockers. He once forgot his glove on a road trip and borrowed one from Jose Mesa and then he never gave it back. He just used it for the rest of the season. I remember a story about how after a game, he asked a reporter to borrow $60,000 so that he could buy a motorcycle. About right here is where I remembered that Nevin asked me to put Manny in the blue jersey. Whoops. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay, where were we? Manny Ramirez was terrible with money. He was known to skip out on paying restaurant tabs and forgetting to deposit his paychecks, but there was no question that he could hit. Paul Shuey once said that Manny sneezes RBIs. I love that. It was so true. Dude loved hitting. And it really is a shame that he got caught up in all of his PED troubles because I'm sure he didn't need any of it. Hey, it's time for a terrible joke. One night, Manny went out to dinner with Sandy Alomar, Alvaro Espinosa, and Carlos Baerga. They were laughing and drinking and just having a good old time. It was a lot like that scene in Major League where Jake Taylor, Ricky Vaughn, and Willie Mays were having dinner in that French restaurant. Anyway, the waiter came by and he said, Hey, Mr. Ramirez, I see your glass is empty. Would you like another? Manny had a quizzical look on his face. <laughs> I have no idea what accent that was, by the way. He thought about it for a second and then he asked, why would I want two empty glasses? Wow, my apologies. There's Manny being Manny with his big leg kick, ready to sneeze out a couple more RBIs. It was a lot of fun drawing a guy that I grew up with. So thank you, Nevin. We're getting closer and closer to that Cy Young card, and I'm having such a blast getting there. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, yada, 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 you know, if you want, whatever. And hey, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, that is not an RBI.